So it appears my opinion on Black Ops Cold War might not particularly be a popular one. To be honest, one of the things I was looking forward to in doing a channel like this was running into the occasions where my opinion whiffs like a wet fart in the eyes of others. It's great. As they say, opinions are like arseholes. We all got them. One of the most common comments left across the few Call of Duty videos that I did, and probably the reason why you're here, was the defense of a game that I somewhat tarnished. So I thought, hey, that's a perfect next video. So I'm going to first of all discuss what I didn't like about Cold War before going over if my opinion has changed in any way or where and whether my original view is a crock of shit. So if you're sharpening the pitchforks, at least wait until after the whole video before attempting to tear me a new one. So, Cold War. First of all, for some context and sort of in defense of the game, you do have to consider the development of it and the issues that Activision had with the franchise going into 2020, which is of course the year Cold War came out. Modern Warfare was rebooted in 2019, we've talked about that one top right corner for that video. I don't want to go over that too much as we already have, but as you probably know it reinvigorated the franchise and went down very well with the community generally, even if some had some major gripes with it. So there was momentum for Activision, and it was important for them to do whatever they could to keep that going. But there were issues for the 2020 release. Following the three year cycle, it was the turn of Sledgehammer to release their game, which was being worked on with Raven, but development was going quite badly. And therefore, with roughly two years or so to go, Activision made the decision to ditch Sledgehammer and get Traug in a year earlier. Now, this obviously put Traug in a tough spot. They had just been developing and then supporting Black Ops 4. They would now have a year less time to make a game that would be at a high standard which is even tougher when you consider it was following the massively popular Modern Warfare reboot. So I just wanted to say that before I go on to the reasons I didn't like it. There is a touch of understanding to it, and I do sort of cut them a little bit of slack in that respect. Right, so that's all the admin out of the way. Cold War, just outright, did not appeal to me at all. It felt confused in what it was, which is ironic because Black Ops stories tend to aim to confuse the players, not itself. It was like a soft reboot that positioned itself as a reboot while simultaneously being a sequel that was a prequel. The cast were changed, the story introduced different characters right in the middle of the whole Black Ops timeline. The series was aligned with the Modern Warfare reboot, and yet it was declared as canon to the original Black Ops games, which means World at War was 2, but what so was Vanguard, Black Ops 2 will be running headfirst into Modern Warfare 2 this year. It just brings out a lot of problems and it feels confusing. As I said, a number of the cast were changed and recast. The story is linking into a much larger storyline with Modern Warfare and also Vanguard. With all that said and done, just reboot the series. It would be so much simpler and it would probably be better for writing new stories as well because you're not worried about tripping over yourself. And that might come out eventually. It was never really completely confirmed whether Cold War was in the same bracket as Black Ops 1, 2, 3 or not. However, it was sort of you were sort of led to believe it was, and therefore it does just sort of get all convoluted. The engine and the gameplay was a downgrade on Modern Warfare, which came the year before. It just did not look as good, it did not look as clean as Modern Warfare did. And something that that is something that brought issues when it came to integrating the game with Warzone later down the line. Something I never really got with Call of Duty generally is that the developers always seem to have their own versions of the engine. I think a move to the same engine should have happened a long time ago and the fact they seem to be heading in that direction now is a good thing especially when you're looking at Warzone that, which has to change and update to each game. It makes much more sense to have what was essentially the Modern Warfare engine working across all the games and Treyarch having just using that. The campaign storyline on its own was okay, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't overly memorable either. Some of the missions were interesting, I played through the East Berlin mission which is actually good for the you know historical context more than the uh, first person shooter action. Also they have that mission where you infiltrate the KGB headquarters, which is again a bit different and a bit interesting. But as a storyline I didn't really find it all that worthwhile, I didn't connect or care for say Adler or his little team that you get introduced with. And something I mentioned in my Black Ops 3 video, again, top right corner for that one, 
I know customization of accounts I can provide a bit of personalization and attachment, but not in COD games, not for me anyway. It's slightly better in this than Black Ops 3 because you can edit your name for the character and there is a nickname to add a bit more personalization. It isn't just player, which is genius for Black Ops 3, really great. But to me, it still doesn't particularly help when trying to connect with them. That being said, it's just a standard COD campaign, really. Somewhat short by game standards. Not completely boring to play through. And like I said, there is some memorable missions. Certainly not the worst Black Ops story. Uh, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, Black Ops 4 didn't even have one. But it's not the best either. However, all that's said and done, the campaign doesn't really matter, let's face it, in the, in the long run of the game. So let's get to the main issue, which was the multiplayer. My biggest gripe, even to still to this day really, with multiplayer and also to a degree zombies, which we'll get to later, was actually at launch. The launch game was really quite lacking. The map numbers were simply not enough if you compare them to Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare had 10 launch maps in standard modes. Cold War had 10 in total across all the modes. Vanguard actually had double that in total. Zombies on Black Ops 4 had up to four maps at launch, depending on what version of the game you had. Cold War had four in total. Again, more on Zombies later, back to the multiplayer. And of course, the, 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 the state of the game at launch is quite a major factor on web, on how you play the game for the foreseeable future. Um, if you have a bad launch, it's quite difficult to get people back. You have to do a lot of work to get people back. So for me, it really got off to a bad start by essentially getting boring before it even got out of November. But in a positive, upon going back to the multiplayer on Cold War, to be fair to it, it certainly wasn't as bad as I remembered it being or I felt like it was back when it was the main game. I actually got to play the remake of Jungle for the first time, which was nice. They obviously added that after the game. Transitioned away from being the main flagship game. Um, and I haven't played Cold War since then. So it was the first time playing Jungle since the Black Ops 1 day. So yeah, like I say, that was good. It was good to, good to reminisce. Although one thing that did become massively clear while I was playing it is just how goddamn crap I am now. I need work before Modern Warfare 2 comes out, I really do. And I was umming and ahhing about whether to mention this at all, considering it's not really Cold War related. But... I feel like I just want to mention it just a rant. By far the most miserable part of my time back on Cold War was SBMM. MMM. God, saying that quick's hard. SBMM. Skill based matchmaking, of course. Really can suck the light out of COD games these days. It really can. Obviously, that, like I say, that's not a Cold War problem. It's the direction of COD now. But being absolutely blasted by people that are clearly too good for me and the others on my team, it just really isn't fun. <laughs> it really isn't. It's unnecessary. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not going to dwell on that. We all, well, I say we all, 99% of us, I'm sure, can agree that uh, skill-based matchmaking is a crock of shite. So moving on. The map's number, which I already said before, did lead to the game becoming somewhat stale. And I remember needing the seasons to get started, to play the game more, which took around a month to start. I believe it was in December that we started to get season one. I can't remember if it was delayed. I feel like it might have been delayed. Obviously, this eventually increased across the year and after, but as I mentioned, the launch is very important to getting it right. Otherwise, you can be practically out of the game by the time it has got large enough amount of content for you to be content. Content to be content. Hmm. I didn't overly like the maps at the time. I won't call any of them particularly memorable. I know Modern Warfare gets some stick for map design, but I found Cold War to be very, very safe in terms of maps. And like I say, none of them were particularly, they don't particularly grab your attention. They certainly won't come close to getting onto the, you know, all time list of best maps. There was nothing grand about them. There was nothing memorable, as I say. This is something where I think I might actually have been slightly harsh on the game at the time, but more on that later. One thing, whatever, we've obviously gone over content in a very negative light, but one thing that I should mention is, and I think I've mentioned it in my Black Ops 3 video again, uh, Treyarch always seem to nail post, post launch content, always. And they provide players with stuff throughout the cycle and beyond. And once again, it did this with Cold War, which of all, uh, all the Black Ops games, it really needed it the most. While we're talking about multiplayer, it's also worth touching upon Warzone here. Cold War and Warzone integration was very messy. The two games on two different engines that didn't go into one very well at all. The issues with Warzone really started to grow for me when Cold War was integrated into it, before Vanguard then really did just, you know, put the final nail in the coffin and kill it off completely. 
Warzone being completely broken isn't fair to put on Cold War necessarily, so I'm not going to. I just hope the future sees a Warzone that can transition between titles in a better manner and Warzone can ultimately actually work. Probably too much to ask, let's face it. Now, the Zombies mode was the best mode in my eyes. Not surprising considering I love Zombies with a passion. However, even here there were parts of the game that were somewhat lacklustre. Already touched upon this, but the map count was incredibly poor. And as much as the maps were somewhat enjoyable for the most part in terms of playing, I would say I found them to be quite lazy, especially in comparison to what we had in the past. If you think of Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 in particular, and Black Ops 2, even Black Ops actually with like maps like Moon, they were so creative and they were so different and they were so interesting to play. Here's what we had with uh, Cold War. We had a larger NAT, which did at least mean some original design, because obviously NAT was quite a small map and there was a lot more room to maneuver. So pass it for that one. Firebase C, the only truly unique map out of all of them. Tick for that one. A map based in a campaign location, namely East Berlin. Actually quite a good map to play, to be fair, but again, location was a bit lazy. And then the fourth and final map was another map based in campaign locations, this time in that weird fake America that the Soviets had for some reason. When I think of some of the maps we've had in the past, these four, other than Firebase, just really lacked anything special. I do appreciate Firebase the most for truly being different, although the East Berlin map, as I said, was really good to play. Despite maybe having a lack of care to them, the maps, like I say, were good, and the gameplay mechanics being improved massively compared to Black Ops 4 really did help the standard zombies mode to remain fun to play. I say standard zombie modes, of course I mean round based. Because then there was fucking Outbreak. Ugh. Just absolutely, absolutely no, no, no time for it, no. The fact they doubled down with the objective bullshit in Vanguard made it even worse for me. The concept was obviously large scale zombies. The execution was something that was massive, boring, repetitive, and dead within a month. I get that it may be somewhat difficult to stretch the creative muscles with a game mode that at its core is actually quite a simple concept. But the thing is you've got to consider that absolutely no one asked for that. No one asked for it. You don't have to go out there and do something massively different in that manner. But they did anyway. I really, really hope that they have learned their lesson from Van Outbreak and Vanguard and that this weird experiment can be put into the grave. It isn't a mode where the community necessarily asks for much, as Shino Numa on Vanguard showed. It really needs to live by if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Black Ops 3 was unbelievable for some reason. It just needed a little bit of tweaking going forward, that was it. But they broke it, and they have not totally fixed it even now. Oh, and the lack of like specific playable characters to the mode really does suck. It really takes the, takes the edge off it. Also misstarting with a pistol, but I appreciate that can just you can just do that anyway with a class. That one may be an unnecessary moan, but I do just miss the idea of you getting lumbered with an M1911 at the start and then you buy your way up. So enough ranting and raving. Do I think I was harsh on Cold War or has my opinion changed at all? Well, let's go through the modes. Campaign? No, no, not really. Didn't connect with it. I can't really say much about it to be honest, didn't care for it, and even after playing it again, that hasn't changed, it's not that great. Zombies mode, my opinion wasn't really that negative anyway, it wasn't completely negative at least, so no I can't say that's really changed either. I still like certain aspects, whilst my view on what I dislike really hasn't changed. That's probably not helped by the shit first six months or so of Vanguard zombies either, let's be honest. But then there is multiplayer, which is obviously the core mode as we would say. This is one area that after a couple of playthroughs, I might have been harsh on. As I said earlier, the experience I had on Cold War multiplayer coming back to it was better than I thought it would be. The only issues I had with it were the skill-based matchmaking, which is a franchise-wide issue, and the fact I'm utterly in the mud at the game, which is a me issue. I actually enjoyed it a bit, bar the games against the absolute sweat lords. It was good to see Jungle again after so many years. I said when discussing my initial view of the maps that they were bland, I don't think that was overly fair. I think they were trying to present the traditional three lane maps after what Modern Warfare tried to do. And whilst there are no standouts, the majority of the maps do play well. And that is ultimately what mattered, more so than how fancy they were or memorable they actually were. They just played well. I think for me, 
The issue with Cold War was mostly down to its engine and gameplay as well as comparisons to what came before it. You see, as much as many of you didn't, I overall actually enjoyed Modern Warfare 2019. But I think that ultimately impacted my view on Cold War. In my eyes, it wasn't up to scratch, it wasn't even close. It was a game that ultimately I got bored with, and if it wasn't for my group of friends, we would have dipped it sooner, at least on the multiplayer front. But this wasn't a completely fair comparison. Modern Warfare was built from the ground up with a three-year cycle, a new engine, a complete reboot of an iconic series. As I mentioned at the start, Cold War had to be rushed into existence. There was a sense of inevitability that Cold War would have to be different. Ultimately, I still don't like the game overly for what it was. It certainly doesn't come close to the top five in the franchise. It will probably be quickly uninstalled again now this video has been done because it is massive. Over 200 gigabyte I had to install. I had to uninstall shit tons of stuff to like record for this. Bonkers. Call of Duty games are bonkers now. I wish they did do a full on reboot, personally. I just wish they started afresh and went again with Black Ops like they did with Modern Warfare and it was a fresh start for the whole, the whole shebang. I wish Activision took the two year break then instead of now. Well, of course, we're not going to get a Call of Duty game in 2023. I wish they did that back then. I wish there was more on day one, and I wish there was more love for zombies. Equally, however, it isn't close to being the worst Call of Duty game either. Um, what going back to the game for this video did show me is the reasons as to why there are those of you who did enjoy this game and appreciate this game. It may have had a rocky start, but it was at least looked after, even up until now. And that is a quality you always end up with when it comes to tryouts. And it bodes well for whatever we end up getting when they return with a decent development cycle. It is hoping we have both major sub-franchises of Call of Duty right back at the top of their game soon enough.